Four easy steps for balancing strobes with ambient. Follow this formula. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on Sign Lens, I'm out here with Chanda Am, and Chanda's gonna help me illustrate how to balance ambient light with strobes. I love shooting in this situation, ambient lights and strobe light. I wanna be able to combine the ambient light that's here, this beautiful area, with strobes. So the way I generally do this is first off, I set her up so that she's got the sun coming from behind. I always like the sun from behind because it's going to give her a nice rim light on her hat, on her shoulders, but I'm going to keep her in the shade pretty much. It's just that little bit of rim light coming through is giving us a little bit of highlights on her hair, on her back, and on her hat. If I'm out in direct sun, I'll throw up a translucent to make it look like she's in the shade or just a plain reflector to get her out of the sun. So now, one of the four steps for balancing strobes. Number one, choose an aperture for creative reasons. How much depth of field do you want? Do you want a shallow depth of field? Do you want a deep depth of field? I want a shallow depth of field. I could choose a deep depth of field, but that's not my creative purpose right now. I want a shallow depth of field. So I'm gonna to go to 5.0. I can make it shallower than that, but for me, I want enough depth of field to keep her face and her head sharp, but let the background fall out of focus. And 5.0 does that really nicely on a 150 millimeter lens. So that's the number one point. Choose your aperture for creative reasons. Number two is, I'm not going to set my shutter at 1 200th of a second. The reason I choose 1 200th of a second is because that is going to get rid of the most amount of ambient possible in the scene without having to go to high speed sync. So I'm at 1 200th of a second. I've chosen 5.0 for creative reasons. Now principle number three, I'm going to match the power of my strobes to my aperture. I'm going to dial the power up or down until I get the perfect amount of light on her face. I just want the strobes to match the aperture. I don't care about the ambient. I don't care how dark the image looks. I just want the strobes to look right on her face. So at 5.0, I'm gonna take an image here, one two hundredth of a second, and just see what we got. It's, the strobes are perfect. I've dialed them up and down, and I've made my adjustments on my strobe. I have that strobe in a nice position up front here to light her face. I've tilted it up slightly, so it's gonna vignette off from her shirt, but it's too dark in the background. So number four, I now start increasing my shutter until I like what I see in the background. So I'm gonna go from 200th to 100. Background's becoming brighter. I like what I'm seeing. I'm gonna to go to a 50th. Now I'm getting some life into that background. I could even go, I think, to a 30th. Now I've got a beautiful background that she feels like she's integrated with and the strobes don't feel like they're lighting it. It looks like it's just the ambient glowing light in this scene. It looks so fabulous. So there's a, there's a simple formula. Choose your aperture for creative reasons. Set your shutter at 1 200th of a second. Balance your strobe power, dial it up and down until it matches the aperture, and then start opening up that shutter until you like the background the way it looks, and that integrates those two together and then shoot away. I'm gonna shoot some. Now if I start getting a hot spot in there and I can see one right now, you can see it just over shoulder, there's a really bright spot back there. It's just kind of killing me. I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit. Doesn't have to be very much. And I'm gonna get rid of that hot spot. So here's two images with and without the strobes. You can see the difference when just adding a little bit of strobe opens up the image and makes it look wonderful. But I got there by first getting rid of as much of the ambient as I possibly could. Then I set my strobe to my aperture. Then I added the ambient until I liked the look and then I shot away. So it's important to note that it doesn't mean that there won't be any ambient light lighting her face. There will be ambient light on her face. But the formula allows you to get rid of all that ambient light on her face. Just see what your strobe is going to do. Make sure you like the strobe and match that to your aperture. Then you add the ambient back in and you'll find the perfect marriage of those two, strobe and ambient. Sometimes it may have a lot of ambient light on her face. Other times, it might not be much at all. But I'm also looking at the background, trying to get that background to balance with her face as well. So I look at those two things as I just make my shutter longer and longer, adding more and more ambient in until I like what I get. If you do this at sunset, you can keep dragging that shutter to a second, two seconds, and that gives you a, like a really blue, deep uh, sky back there. It looks fabulous. But that's the formula, four things to be able to balance your strobes and ambient outside. So let's wrap this up. Follow the four steps for balancing strobes with ambient light and you'll get beautiful images quickly, efficiently, and creatively every single time. Choose your aperture, put your shutter at 1 200th of a second, balance your strobes to your aperture, then increase the length of your shutter until you like the match between your ambient and your strobes and shoot away. 
It's that easy. So make sure you leave some comments below, subscribe here to The Silent Lens. A lot of people come and go and never subscribe. We really need you to subscribe so you can become a part of our family, support us here on The Silent Lens so we can keep doing these lessons. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. The lighter gear is going into that SKB 2011 case that we're headed out. Lighter Studio with a soft diffusion cover. Lighter Studio with a soft box and grid. Handle for the studio. Two Lighter Studios with soft boxes. DMX Power Box. Charging cable for the studio. Lighter Pro and charging cable. Barn doors for the Lighter Pro. Lighter Torch. Filter set for the Lighter Pro. Live full soft box for the studio. Barn doors for the Lighter Torch. Spare batteries for the studio. Honeycomb for the Lighter Pro. Barn door for the studio. So there's all that blinding bright Lighter gear in that 2011 SKB case.